Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Movie Armaments Group up in Toronto, where we are taking a look at a Russian APS Stechkin machine pistol. This is a gun that I've wanted to do a video on for some time. Actually, what I really wanted to do is shoot it for some time. And we're actually going to do that tomorrow. But before we can take it out and shoot it, we need to understand what it is and how it works. So this was developed by a guy named, not surprisingly, Igor Stechkin in the Soviet Union, uh, actually in the Tula arsenal, in the late 1940s. So prototypes of this were, were being built in like 47, 48, 49. The gun was pretty much finalized in 1950, big batch of them made for field trials, and then it was formally adopted in 1951. Now what we have here is both a pistol and, well, it's a stocked pistol. And it's, I can't really say one of the last stocked pistols to be made, because people are still tinkering with this idea to this very day. But the concept was uh, this would be a select fire personal defense weapon. And it was originally intended for issue to NCOs, basically NCOs and specialist infantry troops. So things like tank, uh, tank crews, um, maybe drivers, Guys who, again, like personal defense weapons in every military, guys who didn't need a full-size rifle and had better things to do than be toting around a full-size rifle, or didn't have a good place to store a full-size rifle, but they needed some sort of decent self-defense weapon because they might end up in combat. So in the United States military this role was filled very well by the M1 carbine. The Soviets, uh, in, a, in, in the works of get, in the process of getting rid of most of their submachine guns, they went to this as their planned personal defense weapon. So uh, let's take a look at how it works, and then we'll talk about how it actually did in service. There are a lot of similarities between the Stechkin and the Makarov, and they were adopted at basically the exact same time. So you can see the size comparison here. The Stechkin is really a very large handgun. The Makarov's kind of small, but this is really quite big. Taking a bit of a closer look here, we have our Tula Arsenal uh, manufacturer's mark, serial number, serial number also on the frame. There's a three position selector switch on the side of the slide. The rearmost position is full auto, the middle position there is semi-auto, the forward position with the white dot is safe, and this also serves as a decocker. There we go, that'll drop the hammer. Sights are a very typical square post front sight, and a rear notch sight. Now that rear notch is adjustable, there are four different settings for 25, 50, 100, 100, and 200 meters, and that just raises and lowers that rear notch. Uh, that 200 meter setting was a requirement of the Russian uh, RFP for this pistol. The magazine is a heel release, so you push that in and slightly backwards, pull out the magazine, which obviously looks very much like a Makarov magazine with the open uh, viewing holes in the side. This however is a double stack, double feed magazine, holds 20 rounds, and these are chambered for the 9x18 Makarov cartridge. Obviously you already saw this with the stock attached. There are a pair of slots on the back of the grip and a matching lug on the stock with this locking catch right there. So this slides onto the bottom of the stock, or the grips, and there you have a stock to stabilize your shooting. This is set up with a pair of hooks for a sling and also a big belt uh, loop for a belt. And then in true stocked pistol form you can push the button, open this, it does carry a cleaning rod there also by the way, and you can store the gun in the holster. Well, the holster stock, like so. Uh, there are two different versions of those stocks that they made, the wooden ones and also a Bakelite type material. I'm sure this isn't Bakelite, I think this is phenolic resin, I expect it's the exact same material um, that AK mags were also made of. And what's nice about this is this is a really solid durable feeling stock. One of the big problems with stock pistols, at least in my mind, is that they always, the stocks always feel really fragile because they have to be hollow to hold the gun. 
and I always feel like I'm in serious danger of cracking, like cracking the top, top of the stock uh, if you put any pressure on it. So this one, this is actually heavier than the wood stock and this feels really sturdy. The other two bits I should point out here are a slide lock, so you can see the notch for it right there. This does lock open on this does lock open on an empty magazine, or I can lock it open manually like so. There is also a little loop right here which you can use to attach a lanyard. They don't have that on the butt because that would interfere with the magazine release and also with the stock attachment. In order to disassemble the thing we have to cock the hammer and then just like a Makarov you pull the trigger guard down, although in this case uh, it's, it's kind of fixed in place. It has some mecha a mechanical linkage up here that allows it to lower, where the Makarov is more just spring steel doing that. Once this is down then you can pull the slide all the way back, lift it up, and slide it off the gun. Just like the Makarov this has a fixed barrel on it. In theory it should be a quite accurate pistol. Uh, mechanically this is just plain simple blowback, which is that works just fine for 9 by 18 millimeter. You've got the three position selector going through the top of the slide there to interact with the fire control parts, and that's pretty much about it. Um, that's the firing pin back here, which gets hit by the hammer. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the grip panels off because one of the interesting elements here is that the, the Stetchkin has a rate reducer built into it. Because if you have just a simple blowback 9x18 pistol it's going to run at a very high rate of fire, probably something at or in excess of a thousand rounds a minute, and that is uncontrollable and will empty your magazines way too fast. So there is a rate reducer, let's pull off that grip panel first. This block right here is actually the rate reducer. So every time the gun fires the slide is going to come back, it's going to kick this down, this block has to travel all the way down the grip against that spring. It'll hit the bottom, then it will reciprocate back up, and when it hits the top it will trip the, uh, trip the, the release to allow the gun to fire its next shot. So this is actually relatively similar to like the Astra, the late pattern Astra rate reducers, uh, or even the Scorpion, uh, the Czech Scorpion rate reducer, and it's an important aspect of a machine pistol. So there you go, there is your field stripped APS Stetchkin. Alright back to that personal defense weapon plan, it didn't really work out. The problem was this just wasn't really an effective weapon in that role. It was large and heavy for a handgun, it was still kind of awkward and had a, a fairly limited range, practical range, as a stocked pistol here in carbine form. It just didn't work out well. Ultimately the AKU, AKS 74U, the so-called Krinkov in, in American colloquial terms, that would, would end up taking this role uh, for officers, tank crews, that sort of thing. That was a much more effective weapon as a defensive weapon than the Stetchkin. So production of the Stetchkin only lasted a few years. Uh, these were pretty much pulled out of Soviet service by the 70s and replaced by short-barreled AKs. However, they got a bit of a renaissance uh, when the Soviet Union got involved in Afghanistan, because Spetsnaz troops discovered that you could mount a suppressor on these things, they had a special threaded barrel, and they really liked this as a suppressed machine pistol. They had a little wireframe stock on it, uh, and, and that, that gave this sort of a, a second breath of life. But even with that use, this was never really all that significant of a military weapon for the Soviet Union. So uh, with all of that being laid down, I'm really curious to get out there and actually try shooting this. So we're going to go ahead and do that tomorrow out at the range, so definitely stick around for that video. Uh, big thanks to Movie uh, Armament Group for giving me the chance to take a look at their Stetchkin, and if you happen to be filming a movie up in Canada and you need a bunch of Stetchkins, they actually have a nice pile of them for use in film. So uh, anyway, stick around for the video tomorrow. Thanks for watching.